All right, so we're going to check out the strategy tutorials. Building combos. Here we go. All right. So, corner combos. A corner combo describes a combo that can only be performed when the victim's back is touching the corner of the stage. Who the hell is this guy? What the hell? This guy's got four arms like Goro, but he looks way different. Well, that was the wrong button. There we go. Because the opponent can't be pushed back by his hits when they're in the corner, it's possible to combo with moves like otherwise miss. It's especially true for juggle combos. There we go. There we go. Whenever possible, take advantage of the corner to maximize your combo damage. Experiment in practice mode to find unique and powerful corner combos with each character. Very nice. And there's some crazy corner combos in Mortal Kombat. I know that. <laughs> okay. Combo limitations. There are several systems that affect combos in Mortal Kombat. Some systems limit the damage and length of a combo. Others will give you opportunities to extend a combo. After the first hit in a combo, each additional hit will deal slightly less damage. This damage penalty will slowly grow as you add more hits to the combo, and this is known as damage scaling. We're in a combo repeating the same attack and observe what damage it decreases each time the move hits. There we go. Okay. Damage scaling means longer combos have diminishing returns as you add more hits. Master shorter, easier to execute combos before moving on to longer combos that are more challenging. After the opponent has been launched for a juggle combo, the opponent will fall slightly faster and each additional hit is known as gravity scaling. Yeah. Perform a juggle combo, repeating the same attack, and observe that the opponent is launched lower in the air with each hit. Gravity scaling causes the opponent to eventually fall out of any juggle combo. This is a new guy too, this guy I'm playing with right now, he's very tall. Okay. Now how do you extend combos? I demand to know how to extend my combo. Usually it's meter burning. Meter burning is a special move to have extra properties to launch and stuff. Usually allows you to extend the combo. Alright, each character has attacks that allow them to extend combos, typically at the cost of their offensive gauge. Oh, it's Kotal Khan right there. Try some of Raiden's combo extending attacks. Wrong button. Oh, it worked anyway. Oh, that's his move. Look at that. Oh, I need to hit forward, not jump. There we go. All combo extending attacks have some limit to how many times you can use them in one combo, either through gravity scaling or move specific limitations. Observe that Raiden's Joe push caused a different reaction when used twice in the same combo. Yeah, it grounds him with the second hit. See that? It doesn't launch him up again to continue the combo. Learn the limitations of each of your combo extending moves to discover more efficient damaging combos. Okay. Fair enough. No, I have never tried frog's legs before. 
People say they taste like chicken wings, but I've never had a frog's leg. Okay. Alright, combo starters. Your highest damage combo may not always be the best choice. Use a variety of attacks with different properties to build the right combo for the right situation. I don't even know who the hell this girl is on the right-hand side. Your opponent will have a harder time blocking if you use a mix of low and overhead attacks. Learn combos that start with bull types to increase the chance of a successful hit. Oh, it's Jackie. It's Bri it's uh, Jax's daughter. Okay. There we go. Overhead combo. Vary your combo attack strings to force your opponent to block lower overhead at different parts of a combo. Oh wow, he's got a gra- So what is that move? It's a ground punch, see that? I'm just trying to see his moves. It's pretty cool. The fastest attacks may not be the most damaging combo starters, but they can be great for interrupting slower attacks and punishing an opponent's mistakes. Nice six hit basic combo. Oh, I don't want to be a special will cancel it. Oops. Uh. There we go. You also want to learn combos that start with far reaching attacks that can cover more space. Oh, I got to miss the slide. See, I told you, I have a problem doing back forward moves. Damn it. Ah. There we go. Nice. Many characters have long range attacks that can stun the opponent to start a combo, such as Sub Zero's Ice Ball. Note the increased damage scaling for these types of attacks usually limits the total damage of a follow up combo. No, it didn't work. Damn it. There we go. Right. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, combo enders. Positioning can be more useful than maximizing damage. Try to perform combos that move the opponent closer to the corner. This will limit your opponent's movement options and allow you to perform damaging corner combos. What is this? Oh, that's just you just push. Okay. There it is. You can take advantage of side switching attacks in a combo to place your opponent in a corner that's behind you. Really? Oh my god. Oh, yeah, that's what I needed to do. Okay. Ah. That's what I gotta do, that two and one. Okay. Oh, I'm whiffed. Oh, almost. I gotta get it after the knee, the two and one. Nice. That's pretty cool. Switch sides in the middle of the combo. You put yourself in, advantage, in an advantageous position by ending a combo with an attack that knocks down the opponent for a long time. You'll be able to move and prepare your next attack as the opponent is waiting to get up. Okay. Yeah, see, get into an advantageous position. I like that. 
Some attacks that normally knock your opponent away can lead to a long knockdown that keeps close. You keeps you close to your opponent in the corner, placing you in the perfect position to attack as they get up. Yeah, see, now he's down, so you can go for an overhead, go for a low attack. And you're coming with an attack that keeps your opponent close if you want to attack him with another combo as they get up. Oh, what's this move? A low stab. Look at that. Okay. And you're coming with an attack that creates space between you and your opponent if you want to keep them at a distance with a follow up with projectile attacks. Ah. Raiden looks pretty interesting. They changed a lot of his moves. A lot of his moves are very different. <clears throat> okay. Hit confirming. Hit confirming is a method to simply use an attack in a combo that is otherwise unsafe on block. Start a combo with a combo attack string that's safe on block. Once you've seen your opponent has been hit by the first attack in your combo, you have enough time to react to your hit and add an unsafe attack to extend your combo without risk. <laughs> if the opponent blocks the first attack in your combo, you'll have enough time to react at the end of the combo or an end the combo early without adding the unsafe attack, allowing you to block a counter attack. Now observe the opponent's behavior and only finish the combo if you hit by the first attack of your combo. I did it, but it didn't come out. There we go. The hell is not letting me hit him. There we go. There we go, nice. See, the tricky part about this, you need to know what attacks with your character are safe on block. Like, they just told me that Bar uh, Baraka's triangle, or excuse me, square, square, triangle, or what is that? Front punch, front punch, back punch is safe on block. I wouldn't have known that. So I wouldn't know that that's the safe combo to use as the bread and butter. And if it connects, now extend the combo with a special move. Hit confirming is crucial for competing with highly skilled opponents. This technique gives you the benefit of using unsafe attacks and combos without the risk of the opponent punishing a blocked attack. <clears throat> okay. Alright, that tutorial chapter is complete. I believe we got two more to go. Alright. La 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 la. Yep, advantage and pressure. Here we go. Ooh, Decky Smurfs says Super Blind Man's been using Luke Kang and getting his combos down. Cool. Cool. I don't know who I'm going to use. I really don't know who I'm going to use. All right, get up offense. Get up describes scenarios in which one player is getting up from a knockdown while the other is standing and free to start an attack. Knocking down the opponent gives you control over the pace of the match. It's important to know which of your attacks knock the opponent down the longest, giving you more time to move in and attack before the opponent can get up again. Knock down the opponent. Okay. There we go. A longer knockdown can give you significant frame advantage as the opponent gets up. You can use this head start to time your attacks and hit right after the opponent stands, connecting well before the active frames of any of their attacks can start. Okay. Okay. I did it too early. <clears throat> there you go. A knockdown is a great chance to force the opponent to deal with an overhead or low mix-up, especially if you can time your attacks to hit right after they get up. That was a low attack, but she would have had to block low. That was an overhead. He had to have blocked that high. 
I had to do that earlier. Okay. <clears throat> Try to consistently time your attacks to hit just as the opponent gets up. This can scare them into playing defensively and blocking, but they block too frequently. You have the perfect opportunity to attack with a throw. Aha! <clears throat> we use a mix-up of well-timed overhead attacks, low attacks, and throws each time your opponent gets up from a knockdown. You can create a hard-to-predict guessing game where the odds are stacked in your favor. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fundamentals of fighting games. Having a mix-up strategy where you can attack high, low, or throw, and all of them are viable and can lead to various moves and combos. That's the basics of fighting games that, sadly, a lot of other fighting games today are missing. I hate to say it. Fucking <laughs> Street Fighter V barely even uses it. <clears throat> One powerful tool available where you knock down an opponent is an invulnerable get-up attack. The opponent can use this to interrupt your real-time offense if you attack too predictably as they get up. Okay. The invulnerable get-up attack is very effective at interrupting grounded attackers, but they're less effective at hitting jumping at characters. Using a well-timed jump to evade the opponent's invulnerable get-up attack and punish them with a jumping kick. I missed. There we go. Alright. Alright, and now we get a troll that gets his ass kicked out of the stream chat. Goodbye. Moron. Your opponent may perform a launching get-up attack if they anticipate that you will jump as they get up. Launching get-up attacks cannot be hit by jumping attacks, but they're almost always unsafe on block. Block and punish an opponent when you anticipate a risky launching get-up attack. Consistently punishing get-up attacks to scare your opponent into avoiding using these powerful options. Yep, nice. Your opponent can also backward get-up roll to gain temporary invulnerability and create space when they get up. You can use a well-timed far-reaching attack to chase down and hit the opponent. You predictably use a get-up roll. Okay. Nice. Some attacks or combo attack strings will carry you forward on hit or miss. When timed correctly, this will be an effective option to catch opponents that may or may not perform a backward get-up roll. Commer94 just did a 700-bit cheer to become today's cheerleader and said, all the leftover bits in the reserve. All right, let me add you uh, as the top cheer of the day here. Thank you very much, Commer94. Thank you very much. Okay. Sent you that. Continue on with this tutorial. We're almost done, by the way. Your opponent can also perform a forward get-up roll, which switches sides. That's right. If you anticipate a forward get-up roll, you can hit your opponent with a throw at any point during the roll. Those can also hit backwards get-up rolls, so the timing and spacing is difficult. Yeah, because they're behind. They're moving backward. Nice! Just a scratch. Your opponent can interfere with the timing of your attacks as they get up by performing the delayed get up. That's when they hold L2. Right. There we go. Some combo attack strings can be timed to hit your opponent if they get up with either normal timing or delayed get up. Oh, 
Why is it not counting? I don't know why it's not counting. This is weird. They want it to hit just as he gets up. I hit him as soon as he got up, but it still didn't count. Huh. Oh, they wanted me to do it super early. I see. They wanted to show that some combos are so long that even if they do a delayed get up, they can get up and still get hit by the end of the combo. That's what that was. I didn't understand it at first. Okay, fair enough. Shout out to Clemens, who just subscribed for 20 months in a row and said, Much love. Thank you, Clemens, for the 20 months of support. Appreciate that. I'm actually interested to see how many subs we have right now. 471. So we went down. <laughs> Even though apparently we got a ton of subs today, we went down. Okay, whatever. Shout out to Native N NY, who subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Native NY, for the sub. Uh, Listen, get up the fence. It can be difficult to react to all of your opponent's attacks when you're getting up from a knockdown. You'll usually need to guess the best course of action to defend yourself. Your opponent has the advantage when you're getting up because they can start their attacks before you can. They consistently interrupt you, uh, interrupt you during startup frames of your attack if, if they time theirs correctly. Yup. Since the opponent can interrupt most of your attacks, one of your best get up options is simply to block. Blong Young Get Up has its disadvantages. You'll take block damage, and the opponent is free to mix up overhead and lower attacks to make blocking more difficult. Okay. The opponent can also throw you as you get up, consistently beating your attempt to block. If you're confident the opponent will throw as you get up, punish them with a hop attack. Aha! When you get up, you'll have more options when you have Gage to spend. A launching get-up attack cannot be hit by thrown attacks, and it can launch the opponent for a juggle combo. You'll still be vulnerable to most other attacks. One alternative to block is to spend defensive gauge on a backward get-up roll. Right. The character is invulnerable to most attacks during the startup of the backward get-up roll. Ow. There it is. Remember that a backward get-up roll can be hit by throws at any point. It's briefly vulnerable to all attacks before it fully recovers. Your opponent can still hit you with a well-timed, far-reaching attack, and they predict that you'll do roll backwards. Okay. I fucked that up. Ah. Be aware of your surroundings when using a backward get-up roll. If you can't move backward when you're in a corner, making it easier for your opponent to throw or hit you as you recover from a backwards roll. Yeah, that's bad, man. Stuck in the corner. A forward get-up roll is riskier option than the backward roll, because in most cases it advances toward your opponent, making it easier for them to counter with a throw uh, or when your roll recovers. A forward get-up roll can switch sides with a nearby opponent. It becomes a more effective option if you're trapped in the corner and an opponent get back, attacks you as you get up. Aha. Uh -huh. You can also use the forward get-up roll if your opponent anticipates that you'll perform a backward get-up roll and attempts to punish it with an advancing attack. Every character has a get-up attack that is briefly invulnerable to all attacks during the startup frames. This should be a very effective option if you have enough gauge and you're confident the opponent will attack as you get up. Invulnerable get-up attacks are unsafe on block in most situations, making them an extremely risky option against skilled opponents, so don't use them too predictably. Even when you don't use it, your invulnerable, invulnerable get-up attack can have an effect on your opponent's behavior. They can't attack recklessly as you get up without some risk of getting hit if you have enough gauge. Your opponent may block as you get up because they anticipate that you'll perform a get-up attack. This will give you an opportunity to attack them with a throw instead of a get-up. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. 
Most of all, will get up attacks can be evaded by jumping, leaving you vulnerable to a punish from a jumping attack. Launching get up attacks can an area above your character and cannot be hit by jumping attacks. Use the option when an opponent attempts to evade an invulnerable get up attack by jumping. Do the wrong thing. There you go. A delayed get up is another effective option to throw off the opponent's attack timing as you get up. You have to stay in the same position until you get up, but it can't be punished with, with any kind of rolls or anything. There you go, see? Nice. Remember, you can't perform a get up roll or get up attack after a delayed get up. You have less options to escape your opponent's offense if they anticipate your delayed get up and time their attack to hit later. Okay. Got it. Got it. Block Pressure. Pressure describes the tactic of attacking an opponent in a way that limits their option and forces them to stay on defense, usually through the use of frame advantage. One of the best ways to create pressure is with block advantage. Since your character is able to recover first when you have block advantage, the start of your attacks will have a head start. For example, Johnny's flippy kick is faster than Cassie's roundhouse, but Cassie's slower attack can consistently interrupt her fa his faster attack and perform immediately after Johnny blocks Cassie's roundhouse. Not working. Let me see it. Oh, there's timing to it. There you go. This technique becomes more effective and easier to execute when you use a faster attack after you have frame advantage. Follow high kick with street punch. When time correctly, the second attack will connect around 5 frames after Johnny recovers from blocking. None of Johnny's attacks will start faster than 5 frames, so any attempt to attack after blocking will be consistently interrupted by your second attack. It's called a frame trap. Frame traps are a highly effective way to force the opponent to block instead of attack. Once the opponent is afraid to attack, you can create pressure by ending your frame traps with combo attack strings. <clears throat> Cassie's heavy hitter has a block advantage of 3 and keeps the opponent in range of other attacks, creating a frame trap opportunity for the combo string. Okay. There must be timing to it. Yeah, the timing is specific. You must execute the following attack as soon as you recover. Don't leave a big enough gap for the opponent to counter attack. There it is, it's whipped real fast, damn. Use frame traps to combine multiple combo attacks into extended block pressure sequences. Throw after that, huh? There it is. Wow. So basically he couldn't move at all. What they're saying is, unless he did a perfect block, which we saw earlier when I was playing with Raiden, he can't get out of that. He has to block it all. Damn. If you can scare your opponent and consistently block him when you perform a frame trap, you have an opportunity to surprise your opponent with an unblockable throw. Whoa, I like the throw. She suplexes you into the drone. Experiment with different attacks to learn new frame traps. They're effective at controlling the pace of the match, dealing block damage, and they can create opportunities to mix up the opponent. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Now hip pressure. Damn. A lot of lessons. Huh. <laughs>
Okay. Less than hit pressure. Generally, when you finish an attack that hits the opponent and leaves them standing, they won't be able to do anything but block until they completely recover. This means you can create a frame trap after attacks with hit advantage that don't knock down. Perform knee lunge immediately after low staff for a frame trap with a gap as small as four frames. If your second attack has a startup that's faster than the hit advantage of your first attack, your second attack can connect while the opponent is still recovering. For example, Baraga can force the opponent to block a spiked cross if he performs it immediately after hitting with low foe. The technique is known as Jailing. Since you're completely safe to attack and the opponent can now perform any action except block. Most characters can hit with down and square or down and X to jail the opponent and create pressure. Oh wait, certain neutral circle. Shield your opponent and attack them with a high attack before they can fully recover, they won't be able to evade the attack by ducking. Aha! He couldn't they couldn't duck, she was stuck in the standing animation. You saw that? Combo attack strings like Bloodthirsty are useful for creating frame traps or jailing the opponent. Jilling your opponent with a hit, follow up with the text that have high block advantage to create additional frame traps. This kind of sustained pressure is great for dealing block damage and keeping your opponent on the defensive. <clears throat> yeah. do it fast enough. Oops. <laughs> Not doing it fast enough. That was it. So what they're, basically what they're showing you, each character will have safe hit strings that are so fast they keep your opponent in a, in a blocking position and if executed properly with the right timing, they cannot interrupt them. Unless they're doing a perfect block and reversal, they can't interrupt them at all. They have to block the whole thing and it's safe for you. So... What you need to do is learn those with every character and then do them to keep them in lock stun so that they try to do unsafe moves and you blow right through them with a punish combo, basically. Okay. Interesting. I like that. Shout out to Beach Noob, who subscribed for three months. Appreciate that. Pressure defense. When competing with a skill competing with a skilled opponent, you'll inevitably be in situations where the opponent has an advantage and is applying offense. Oh, offensive pressure. There are several options to escape pressure, but you'll need to know when and how to use each effectively. When your opponent hits you with an attack that has enough hit advantage to jail you, your only option is to block until you fully recover. If you block an attack that has block advantage, it's very risky to attack afterward because the opponent can easily put you in a frame trap and interrupt you with their faster attacks. Your safety option is usually to block. Blocking has its risk though. You're potentially vulnerable to throws and overhead low mix-ups and your opponent will gradually inflict block damage with each attack. So watch for opportunities to escape when your opponent is applying block pressure. When you see them perform an attack that has block disadvantage, you have a chance to start your own offensive block pressure with one of your faster attacks. There we go. If your opponent risks using an attack that's unsafe on block, be sure to capitalize on the opportunity to punish with a combo. Consistently punishing unsafe attacks can scare your opponent into avoiding some of their most powerful tools. Nice. 
There are some opportunities to attack when your opponent has frame advantage, though it can be risky unless your opponent is behaving predictably. Watch to see if your opponent uses high attacks to create a frame trap. You can duck under their high attack if you're not blocking and interrupt them with a ducking attack. Aha. Uh -huh. Your opponent won't always perform a frame trap when they have block advantage, and they may choose a slower attack to create an overhead or low mix-up. You can predict your opponent will, will perform a slower attack when you're at a frame disadvantage. You have a chance to interrupt them with one of your fastest attacks. A flawless block can significantly reduce the block damage you take when the opponent is applying block pressure. You will continue to take reduced block damage after a single flawless block when your opponent continues to rapidly attack. Nice! I actually did it! When blocked, some combo attack strings have brief gaps between the attacks during which you can recover and have control of your character. You can perform a flawless block during a combo attack string if there's a large enough gap between attacks. Performing a flawless block can be easier during a string, so the timing of the opponent's attacks is more consistent than a frame trap. There it is! If you can flawless block the first attack in a combo attack string after a frame trap, you perform the invulnerable block attack by putting up an axe. There we go. Input up and triangle after the flawless block to perform the block attack that lo uh, lacks a vulnerability, but it will start a juggle combo. You can use this to interrupt your opponent during their block pressure if there's enough gap between attacks. Screw that up. Screw that up. Tough. Damn it. Got it. But he still stuffed me. I don't get it because I did it right and then he stuffed me anyway. This is tough. Let me see the demo. That's what I did and he stuffed me. <laughs> now I can't get it. Yeah, I seriously can't get it. He stuffs it. What the hell? That's what I did in mine got stuffed. Finally. <laughs> that was annoying. Wolf the phone took me five dollars and said, Oh, why are you doing the tutorials on stream? You could have done them in your own time. Because I don't have any of my own time. My gaming time is my streaming time. I don't play games offline. I don't have time to play games offline. So everything that I do, I stream. Playing the tutorial is a good way for me to learn and for you guys to understand the basics. If you don't like it, come back when the tutorial is done and stop complaining. Cactus God subscribe for nine months. He says, when he shows a number like frame advantage, 14, is the higher number uh, or lower number better? Uh, lower... Because what you want is a move that has startup, low startup frames, but high frame advantage. So the number doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. It depends on if, what are they talking about. Is the number the startup of the move, or is the number the block stun for the move? You want a move that has the lowest startup, but the highest amount of block stun for the opponent. So it comes out quick for you, but it locks the opponent in a block animation for a longer period of time. So the number itself doesn't mean anything. It depends on what the number is applying to. Okay. And when you have a low health, you can perform a fatal blow when your opponent is attacking. A fatal blow has armor that can absorb attacks during some of its startup frames, which can push through the opponent's frame trap or use it a reversal. Oops. There we go. So you block and then use the fatal blow through the third hit. A 
Fatal Blow can armor through small gaps when blocking some combo attack strings. Use your Fatal Blow carefully. It's a wasteful option if the attack fails to hit. You'll still take damage from any incoming attacks that you hit when you have armor. There you go. The foundation of an effective defense against pressure is knowledge of the strengths and weaknesses of your opponent's attacks. Learning to play an opponent's character is one of the best ways to defeat them, and that's true. You need knowledge not only of the character you're playing with, but of the characters you're facing, because you need to know what's safe and what's not, what attacks you can interrupt, and which ones you can. Even if you don't know the exact frame data for each of your opponent's attacks, it helps to learn which of their common attacks have block advantage, which have block disadvantage, which are unsafe, and which can jail on hit. That's correct. Very nice. Okay. So I think there's one more, and then we're done with all the tutorials. I think there's one more. Okay. Yep. Positioning Rid Resources, the final one. Okay, and then we're done with the tutorials because I'm not going to do character specific right now. Here we go. Okay, zoning. Zoning is the strategy of keeping the opponent at a specific range where you have an advantage. This limits their options and controls the pace of the match. Zoning typically involves keeping the opponent at long range with projectile attacks. The foundation of your zoning game will be your projectile special moves. Lightning Bolt is a good zoning attack since it travels at high speed and is safe on block at most ranges. Lightning Bolt! The opponent must take an action like duck, block, or jump to deal with the projectile attack, preventing them from freely walking forward and helping you control the pace of the match. Learn to time your projectile attacks to fire them as quickly as possible, creating an obstacle course of attacks for your opponent to deal with. There you go. Several block projectiles can be more effective than a successful hit. Each block special move deals a meaningful amount of block damage and pushes the opponent back slightly. Wow, do it. There we go. Most projectile attacks are high attacks, so your opponent can duck to avoid them without taking damage. If you throw your projectiles too predictably, the opponent can easily duck and walk forward to evade your attacks safely at close distance. Adjust the timing and frequency of your projectiles as the opponent advances to make them more difficult to predict. The opponent can also evade projectiles by jumping over them. While this can be effective, it's also risky since they're committing to the jump for a period and can't block. Adjust the timing of your lightning bolt so the opponent out of, hit them out of the air. That was not the lightning bolt. That was not the lightning bolt. That was the lightning bolt. It was too late. There we go. <laughs> if you anticipate that the opponent will commit to a jump, you can use an anti-air attack to hit them out of the air more easily. This can be risky if you guess wrong because the opponent can advance more easily or hit you with their own attack. That's a pretty cool anti-air attack. Oops. There we go. You'll need to maintain distance to keep your zoning game going. Walking, jumping, or dashing backward while throwing projectiles can be good ways to create space and have plenty of room behind you. The space between you, excuse me, the space behind you is a valuable but limited resource when zoning. Retreat too frequently and you can put yourself in the corner where your opponent can easily close in. Before you get close to the corner, look for opportunities to switch sides with the opponent. Give yourself more room to retreat. A combo can give you a safe opportunity to switch sides. Nice. Raiden can still teleport, which is cool. Honk Honkler. When are you going online with ranked or something? Honk Honkler, you missed the entire pre-stream. I'm not doing that at all for a while. Because first of all, online play today is all screwed up because everyone's playing. Second of all, I'm playing the story first. So come back whenever the story is done, which could be tomorrow. 
All right, when zoning, be aware of all the long-range tools available to your character. Mixing a variety of attacks makes it more difficult for your opponent to evade without taking damage from hits or blocking. Raiden can knock down and push back his opponent by amplifying his Lightning Bolt. Knockdown is very effective when zoning, since it prevents your opponent from moving for a time, giving you a chance to create more space. Double Lightning Bolt. Amplify Lightning Bolt for a mid attack that can't be evaded by ducking. Even when blocked, it causes good block damage, pushes back the opponent, and it has more block damage to give you time to retreat or block. Lightning Strike is an attack that must be aimed to hit an opponent at different distances. While this attack does not cover the same horizontal space as the traditional projectile, it's a mid attack that cannot be evaded by ducking. Many characters have attacks that are particularly effective at countering zoning, like Scorpion's Hell Port. Be careful with these types of attacks for throwing projectiles. Yep, there you go. Though effective against projectiles, Scorpion's Hellport is unsafe on block, so consistently block and punish projectile countering attacks to scare your opponent into avoiding them. Nice, that was one of the the big crush combos too. <laughs> Alright, very nice. Very nice. Yes, Bambino, this is quite a long tutorial, but it teaches you a lot. Fighting Zoners. Certain characters excel at long-range combat and zoning. These kinds of opponents will attempt to keep you at a distance to maintain an advantage, but you have several options to close the gap and maintain the upper hand. Though necessary, at times you want to minimize the number of projectile attacks that you block. Each block projectile deals a meaningful amount of block damage and pushes you back slightly to keep you at a distance. Several block projectiles can be just as effective as a successful hit. Oh, crap. I was paying attention. Slutang. Instead of blocking, do your best to evade the opponent's attacks at range. Most projectile attacks are high attacks, which means you can safely duck without blocking to avoid them without taking any damage. Yep. Typically, your most reliable way to approach zoning is to duck under their high projectiles and then patiently walk forward. You can also jump over most projectiles, giving you an option to approach while avoiding the attack at the same time. Ow. Don't jump over projectiles too predictably, as you can't block while jumping. The opponent can adjust the timing of projectiles to hit you as you're landing. Some characters have airborne projectile attacks and can easily hit a poorly timed jump. Watch for projectiles that are mid or low attacks that can't be ducked under. These attacks must be blocked or evaded by jumping. Low fireball. Okay. Be aware of the weaknesses of your opponent's mid and low projectile attacks. Most cost gauge to perform or have longer startup or recovery periods that make them risky to use frequently. Luke Hang's low fireball has a slower startup and longer recovery than his fireball, giving you more time to jump over the low projectile and duck a second high projectile. You can also use a will time hop to evade a low projectile. You can't advance during a hop, but you'll recover earlier than a normal jump, giving you time to walk forward before your opponent starts their next attack. I hit me in the nuts. So it, it didn't even work. Yeah, they, they acted like it did. Some attacks are just sub zero slide that you advance while ducking under high projectiles. While this attack is vulnerable if blocked, it can be effective if your opponent is using high projectiles too predictable. Nice. Once you're closed in on a zoning opponent, watch for opportunities to duck and punish the projectile with a far reaching attack. A jump-in attack can also be a good option if the opponent commits to a projectile attack when too close. Most zoners will try to retreat to maintain their ideal combat distance. You can use this to your advantage by slowly backing them into a corner. A cornered opponent has no more room to back up and keep you at a distance. It'll inevitably take some hits from a zoning opponent. Do your best to not get frustrated when this happens. Play patiently, focus on avoiding more damage. Wait for opportunities to move into a range where you can fight back. If you're knocked down by a zoner, you can use a forward get-up roll to regain some ground. You'll be invulnerable to all incoming attacks except throws during the beginning of the get-up roll. 
Remember that you're briefly vulnerable to attack at the end of a getup roll. If the opponent predicts your getup roll, they can punish you with a well-timed attack. When two characters perform projectile attacks at the same time, they'll usually trade hits and both characters will take damage. These types of traits usually favor the character with the most health. You can use trades to your advantage if your character has a projectile that can start a combo after a trade. It may take some damage from the incoming projectile, but you can deal significantly more damage to your opponent. God damn it, he does it so fast, I can't throw the fireball. He does it so fast, I can't throw the fireball. There we go. And I can't get the slide kick. Wow. Can't get the slide kick out. Ugh. Finally. Okay. I told you, I have a lot of problems back forward moves facing right. I just can't get them out on a D-pad. I don't know why. I can seriously do them every time right to left, but not left to right. Firm my five, subscribe for two months. Is it crap in your hat? Alrighty then. Thanks for crapping in my hat. I don't wear a hat. Okay. So, a grounded neutral game. The neutral game describes scenarios where no player has an immediate advantage, and both players are free to attack, block, or move. When playing the neutral game, your goal is to land successful attacks while avoiding your opponents and put yourself in a situation where you have a positional advantage or frame advantage. Knowing the ranges of your different attacks is very important in neutral situations. When the opponent is in a space that you can hit, it becomes more dangerous for them to take an action because you can interrupt them with an attack at any moment. That was the wrong button. Use the threat of your attacks to limit your opponent's options when they're in range. You don't necessarily need a hit, so some blocked attacks have frame advantage that can lead to pressure and an offensive advantage. Your faster attacks are more difficult for the opponent to react to and can interrupt their actions more easily, while longer range attacks can threaten and control more space in front of you. It's glitched. I can't hit him with it. There we go. I had to do another move to get close enough to hit him. That was pretty stupid. Damn, that thing has crazy range. Nice. Your opponent will also attempt to control space by threatening you with their attacks. You'll be more successful in the neutral game if you learn the ranges of the opponent's best mid and long range attacks. Characters furthest reaching attacks will often move the character forward to cover more space. This can be very effective in neutral situations to close the gap for a combo or pressure, but it can be risky if this kind of attack misses entirely. A character is vulnerable to a punish if they miss their attack in the neutral, especially if the attack moves forward or has longer recovery. Stay just outside the range of the opponent's attacks, punishing them during their recovery if they miss. Okay. Oh! The opponent will not move into the range of your attacks if they use a stationary attack, but you can use a well-timed advancing attack to punish them if you're just outside of their range. That's the crush counter. <clears throat> Some characters can use weapons to extend their attack range beyond their body. This kind of attack is effective at controlling space in neutral situations, since you can attack with less risk of getting hit by an opponent that may attack at the same time. It's even possible to hit the extended limbs of an opponent if you can anticipate when they'll attack. When timed correctly, this allows your attack to connect with an opponent that's standing well beyond the move's normal range. Punch the foot. God damn it. You traded. Your far-reaching attacks can threaten a significantly larger space if you punish the opponent after they missed with an advancing attack. Oops. Hit his tip of his hand. 
the tip of his fist. I gotta punch the opponent here. There you go. Nice. In neutral play, you'll want to stay outside the range of the opponent's best attacks while keeping the opponent inside the range of your best attacks. You'll need to stay mobile to maintain your ideal spacing. When you're just within range of an opponent's attack, you can walk backwards just as they strike to make them miss, giving you an opportunity to punish. Whoops. There you go. Oh! Take that! Yes. Very nice. Uh, a couple cheers came in. That douche you cheered. He said, I haven't been here in a while. How are you? Did I miss anything interesting? Not really. Uh, it's been kind of dead these last couple of weeks, but now we got a new game finally, which is great. Thank you for the cheer. And Alex Master did a 300 bit cheer and said, hope you're having a good day. So far I am. I'm learning a lot about the game before I try to take it on, which is great. Okay. Uh, you can't move and block at the same time. If any attack instead of blocking can create opportunities to punish a miss, but it comes with some risk of taking a hit if you misjudge your distance, timing, or which attack the opponent will perform. If you're confident that a nearby opponent will use a high attack in a neutral situation, you can evade by ducking and interrupt them with a ducking attack. Remember that you're still vulnerable to other types of attacks while ducking. If you're confident that a nearby opponent will use a low attack in a neutral situation, you can evade the counter with a hop attack. Oops. <clears throat> okay. Now grounded neutral. <laughs> okay. All right. Watch out for jumping attacks from your opponent. They're an effective way to avoid many of your moves while advancing and attacking. And they can be used to start an offensive combo or hit on block. <laughs> Though effective jumpers are vulnerable to attacks since the character cannot block while jumping, several of your moves are effective anti-air attacks that can reliably hit an opponent jump in if timed correctly. Most characters will use down and triangle as an effective anti-air attack because this hits an area above and in front of the character. It's a fast startup gives you enough time to react and attack after you see an opponent jump. Watch out for far-reaching jumping attacks that can cover a wide area, like a ball's bleed punch. These kinds of attacks can be more difficult to counter with a grounded basic attack without getting hit. Experiment with other attacks that can act as effective anti-air attacks. Look for attacks that can hit above the character, have short starter frames, or have active long frames. Like a jab. Oops. Some characters have anti-air projectile attacks that can cover a wide area and hit jumping characters from a distance. They usually have longer startup, but you'll have a harder time using them on reaction. You have to anticipate when your opponent will jump. Like that. The upward angle of anti-air projectile attacks can leave you open to attacks from the ground, so be careful to not use them recklessly. One of the best ways to counter a jump in is with your own jumping attack. Many characters have a jumping attack with a fast startup and longer active frames, making them good for catching opponents that are jumping forward. A jumping attack from a forward jump can cover a wider area than an attack from an upward jump, but you'll be easier to hit if your opponent anticipates your jump and uses their own anti-air attack. Some anti-air attacks can lead to co a combo after a successful hit. Consistently punish your opponent's jump-ins with a combo to scare them into using a, a less, this useful option less instead. Oops. There we go. Too late. Too early. Damn it. 
too early again. Gotta find the right timing. Ah, can't get the move to come out. Too late. The move has a lot of startup. Damn, this is gonna be tough. Oh, it's an aerial juggle. I didn't know that. There we go. I thought you do it when you land. No, you do an aerial juggle. Okay. If a character performs a jumping attack and misses, they'll have a brief recovery period after they land, during which they cannot move attack or block. If your opponent performs a jumping attack from their maximum range, you can walk backward to make them miss, then punish them as they recover after landing. Nice. Neil deGrasse Tyson to be $7 said, so what's with all the frogs? It's just some dumb meme that these kids created, and I don't know what the hell it means. I don't actually think it even has a meaning. Okay. Alrighty. We're almost done here. Ga gauge management. Your gauge is a vital resource that you'll need to carefully manage when facing a skilled opponent. Even if you have less health than your opponent, your gauge can help you gain the upper hand when used effectively. Your gauge will be full over time after it's been spent. Generally, spending gauge less frequently means you'll have more of your abilities available to you more often. Try to save your gauge for opportunities that will let you get the most benefit. Your offensive gauge is valuable for extending combos, but it's usually efficient to amplify only one special move per combo. Amplifying a second will add significantly less damage to the combo than the first one due to damage and gravity scaling. Okay. What is the move? That's it? Okay. While it can be less efficient to spend your entire offensive gauge on a single combo, it can be a good choice in cases where the additional damage is critical to win a round. Oh, I fucked up. You gotta rapidly press it first. There you go. Most abilities only require half of your offensive gauge. Spending half to amplify a single special move in your gauge is not full will prevent you from using other gauge abilities. Offensive gauge is use useful for more than just extending combos. Some special moves can be amplified to make an attack safe on block, or deal additional block damage that can be difficult or impossible for the opponent to avoid. Get up attacks are valuable for turning the tables on an aggressive opponent when you've been knocked down. They cost half of your offensive and defensive gauge, preventing breakaways, but allowing other gauge abilities until it refills. Yep. Get up rolls are an alternative to get up attacks. If you spent your offensive gauge, but still have half of your defensive gauge, you can even punish an opponent if they commit to a slower attack as you get up. Oops. Oh, come on. It's not working. Oh, the timing. I gotta learn the timing. There we go. It's valuable to have gauge available even when you don't use it. The possibility of a get up attack makes it riskier for your opponent to attack if you after a knockdown. If you don't have gauge, it's safer for your opponent to aggressively attack you as you get up. Block attacks are the most difficult to use gauge ability since they require a flawless block and precisely timed inputs to perform. When used correctly, they're highly effective at turning the tide on an opponent that's applying block pressure. This is gonna be tough. I gotta time the block, the low block perfectly. Damn. 
Jesus, it's tough. There we go, got it. Like getup attacks, a block attack costs half of your offense and defensive gauge, preventing breakaways but allowing other, ga uh, other gauge abilities until it refills. The possibility of a block attack makes it riskier for your opponent to apply block pressure. If you don't have gauge available when blocking, your opponent can attack more aggressively and keep you on the defense. A breakaway is your only ability that can get you out of a combo that's already started, but it will cost you all of your defensive gauge. Your defense options will be limited for some time after a breakaway, but you'll still be able to amplify special moves. The high cost of a breakaway means you should only use one when it will avoid a significant amount of damage. There we go. Updating tutorial progress. Okay, good. We're almost done. I think we got like one more. Fatal Blow Management. One or two more. Okay. Lesson Fatal Blow Management. Your Fatal Blow is a powerful attack that's only available when you're low on health, but it can't be used again for the entire match if it successfully hits. A successful hit from a Fatal Blow will cause a very high damage, making it useful as a combo ender. Remember that damage scaling can significantly reduce the damage of a Fatal Blow after a long combo. There you go. Oh, right through the hand. Right through the chest. Don't worry, she's fine. Since a Fatal Blow does not cost gauge, you can use it in the same combo as an Amplified Special Move to deal significant damage. Oh. Oh, I did it too early. Oh, still too early. The ba I have problems with the back forward moves on this back. Oh, yeah. I didn't get the move out. Oh my god, I can't get it. There we go. Oh, still doing it too early. There we go. So comboing into the, the meter burn throw, which is back forward circle, creates a juggle that you could combo after. Look at that damage. The Fatal Blow's armor makes it an effective and easy to use reversal attack that can interrupt the opponent's block pressure. I should have blocked those two hits. There you go. So I'm just going to warn everyone, keep spamming froggy mochi will be banned permanently from the stream chat, so you want to calm down now and give everyone one chance to stab. Alright, avoid using your fatal blow recklessly. If you spend your fatal blow during the first round of the match or lose that round, you'll be at a disadvantage in the second and third rounds. Right, because you can only use it once during a match, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, that's it. The tutorial's now done, I believe, right? Yeah. Strategy tutorial's completed. What did I get? Sub-Zero, Ice Storm Executioner Axe, the Lin Kuei Assassin Mask, and Serena's Memento Belt. So, <laughs> okay. All, ge all general tutorials completed. I unlocked the Shao Kahn announcer voice. I'm turning that shit on immediately. I want that fucking voice on, dude. Shao Kahn is so good. No bad matchups. I got the trophy. I'm going to do that right now. Let's go to the main menu and turn on the Shao Kahn announcer voice. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, let's see how I do it. How do I go to the options? What would it be? Audio? Announcer. No. How do you change the announcer? 
Not your voice. Fight. 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 Now I'm gonna do Shao Kahn. That's pretty good. Save those changes. Very nice. Okay. And I am Anna's dollar tip saying the froggy moats are purposely trolling and spamming the chat. No, of course they are. Haha. <laughs> That's why we take care of it. No worries. Alright. The tutorial is complete. It took two hours, but that was a lot of information to absorb. I mean, I learned about a lot. I learned about those crush combo moves, which I didn't even know. You can only do them once every fight, and each character has three. I didn't know that. I learned about the air recovery, the rolling forward, rolling backward, the two get-up moves that you can do, and the perfect blocks. So I learned a ton from doing the tutorial. I'm glad I did because a lot of that stuff is brand new to Mortal Kombat, so it was definitely worth doing. Very nice.